everybody to our next session. And uh, I'd like to introduce um, Darnell Melvin, who will be talking about dynamic mapping using collaborative knowledge graphs, a Sparkle workflow for real-time SCOS mapping from Wikidata. Darnell Melvin is the Special Collections and Archives Metadata Librarian and an Associate Professor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where he is the Lead Metadata and Semantic Web Strategist responsible for Wikidata production, managing metadata activities such as large-scale remediation projects, metadata workflows, and metadata documentation. He is the co-author um, of Linked Data for the Perplexed Librarian and researches metadata and resource discovery in digital libraries, ethical representation in public knowledge graphs, and data, inter and data integration. His work explores linked data implementation and graph-based visualization tools, metadata remediation tools and services, workflow engineering and optimization, and system interoperability. Melvin received his MLIS degree from San Jose State University with a specialization in information organization, description, analysis, and retrieval, and is one great guy. So please take it away, Darnell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be tuning in from. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to be participating in this year's LD4 conference, and I thank you all for attending this session. In today's presentation, I'll be going over an ETL workflow to construct a number of graphs consisting of SCOS concepts. This demonstration provides an example how easy it is to incorporate linked open data into local knowledge graphs for a variety of cases. Now, I know some of you may not know what SCOS is or have limited experience working with it, so I've decided to give a brief introduction to re-familiarize ourselves with SCOS basics. I'll also will introduce the CSV to RDF converter, a lightweight Python program I wrote which converts Wikidata results from a live Sparkle query and transforms them into an RDF file serialized in the NT file format. This open source middleware program is essential to the workflow. Afterwards, we'll pivot towards a live demonstration using Sparkle construct statements to transform our Wikidata into a number of mappings relevant to the cultural heritage community. And finally, we'll conclude by demoing the workflow. So before we dive in, I should probably tell you the backstory on how the workflow came to be. So in December 23, I started to investigate triple stores for a number of reasons, um, including the desire to launch a public Sparkle endpoint consisting of UNLV Special Collections linked data, to set up a semantic database to build out new linked data products and services, and to experiment with data models for bibliographic description, such as BibFrame, IFLA LRM, or CIDOC. And at the same time, I began looking for cultural heritage projects that incorporated Wikidata or Wikibase. And what I found so far is that these projects typically fall under a few themes. They include Wikidata integration into library catalogs, Wikidata integration into digital collections or digital asset management systems, graph visualizations powered by Wikidata, and map visualizations powered by um, Wikidata. Here's the first example I found uh, incorporating Wikidata into the library catalog. The University of Central Florida in their uh, Primo search has incorporated Wikidata into knowledge panels to serve up side by side with the results as someone searches um, for items in their catalog. This is a screen capture of our digital UNLV Special Collections uh, portal, which is an Islandora instance. And you can see for the person, Ruby, uh, Ruby Duncan, 
you could see how her node is collected, is connected to related archival collections, digital objects you can see on the bottom of the screen, as well as linking out to a number of authority sources. And in this case, you can see us linking out to the LC name authority file for her, as well as the entity I created for her in Wikidata. A graph example is uh, the Black Bibliographic uh, project, which is uh, a joint project with researchers at Yale and Rutgers, um, they're building out a wiki-based instance of pub Black publications, their publishers, and the authors. And this uh, screenshot captures a graph, uh, a graph uh, of those. An example of map visualizations powered by Wikidata. This is a screenshot of the Wikiframe visual graph, a program I co-developed, uh, where we've incorporated the open street maps to visualize and plot um, uh, items from Wikidata. And as you can see in this results, there's a map filter to the right-hand pane where you go facet filter by the P31 value. So what is SCOS? We know it's a W3C recommendation to represent the sources, classifications, or any controlled vocabulary. It's built on RDF and RDFS and OWL, and it's very easy to publish with this. The basic concept of SCOS lies with a term called the concept. Um, and it's an abstract, it's an abstract thing. Um, and you gotta remember that the label is independent to the concept. We also have an example of numerous organizations who've also been incorporating SCOS into um, their knowledge um, their knowledge systems. Um, at this point, we're gonna move to the basics of the SCOS. So concepts are identified by URIs and let's consider this example. Create a knowledge organization system about metadata. The current concept is metadata, which is represented in the following way. You can see I've used the LCSH namespace and in the prefix, you can see that this is a library conjurer subject heading. We can add labels to our concept. There are two types of labels, preferred label, and SCOS alternative label. And it should be noted that one concept can only have one preferred label per language tag, but it can have multiple alternative labels. Now we can start to add semantic relationships. SCOS offers hierarchical, associative, and mapping relationships. The hierarchical relationships are SCOS broader and SCOS narrower. For example, the concept information organization is broader than the concept metadata. Likewise, the concept linked data is narrower than the concept metadata. SCOS has one associative re relationship, SCOS related, which is used to assert a relationship between two concepts for example, the concept uniform resource identifier is related to linked data. SCOS has two mapping relationships, close match and exact match, which allows us to represent mappings between different concepts. The SCOS close match indicates that two concepts are sufficiently similar and both concepts may be used interchangeably However, it is not transitive. SCOS exact match denotes a higher degree of similarity, namely both concepts have the same meaning. This relationship is transitive. For example, assume Darnell Melvin represented in the LC name authority file exists in another SCOS um, thesaurus. Say, for instance, in this case, it will be Viop. 
and we want to link it. You can see with the SCOS exact match, it's the exact same concept. We could see in the first triple, once the my name was uh the NF uh the NAF uh URI was declared with an RDF type as a SCOS concept, and we could see that this VIOF is also a SCOS concept, and you can see that we got an exact uh, label match. So SCOS also has properties for documentary notes and for concept schemes. So let's look at the workflow. So this workflow is in, uh, carried out in five basic steps. Uh, we're going to construct our wiki data via Sparkle. We're going to save those that Sparkle results in the CSV format. We're going to then load and run the CSV results through my CSV to RDF converter, which will then convert it into an NT file that you could then upload into your triple store. I've made the source code available under a BSD3 clause license, and the link is in on the slide. And now we're gonna move over to our demonstration. So uh, the Sparkle queries used in today's demonstration can be found in section 1.3 of my wiki, which you have the links there. On this site, I have a bunch of Sparkle, uh, additional Sparkle examples. I know in the past uh, I've shared uh, our PCC Wikidata pilot project page, which has a bunch of Sparkles. These are some additional ones I've created for, um, instruct for instructional purposes. Uh, today we'll be working in concept six, section 1.6, construction statements. So, I'm gonna, before I run this, you guys can follow along. You could run it uh, locally on your machine. After the code block, you see a blue uh, try it link. If you click it, it'll open it up in the Wikidata query service engine. And all you have to do is click the blue play button at the bottom left-hand side of the engine. Um, before I run them, I want to just briefly give you some uh, breakdown of the Sparkle statements, just for those of you who may not be familiar with Sparkle. So underneath this where clause, this is where we're pulling the data out of Wikidata that we want, pertinent data. For this prod, uh, for this one, we're constructing a graph of people on the Wiki project African diaspora list, including their place of birth and their occupation. So this is a graph consisting of three concept, three types of, or three classes of concepts, of people, occupations, and their places of birth. And so when I click, here, I'll open it up in another window. We'll load it here. And the construction is where we do our mapping. So the variables that I declared in the where clause we then have to map them to some type of ontology. And as you can see in the construction, the predicates that I've selected are SCOS as well as schema.org. The schema.org uh, ontology was used for some of the bibliographic um, bibliographic information about a person, but the, as you can see the main SCOS concepts is all from the SCOS namespace. Uh, I limited it to one so you could see the overall structure of the triples on the output. So I'm running it, it'll take a second. And then you can see, here goes our set of triples. Um, as you can see in the subject, they're still Wikidata, uh, they're from the Wikidata ontology. You know, Wikidata is a, a major hub of persistent identifiers. So technically we could have switched the subjects out to reference uh, any of those URIs from any of those other uh, external databases to represent the subject. Uh, I just kept them as is for this example. As you can see, the first triple defines the class. It's a SCOS concept. I then further uh, classed it by saying, oh, this concept is also a person. 
And then you can see this is Miles Davis. He had a place of birth. And then you can see that the place of birth down here has a preferred label as well as a description. Um, and then you can see that those have been typed as well. Uh, one thing to note, RDF is there's really no order to the triples. So, you know, if I reran this again and, you know, we might get another set of triple, we might get a totally different result back. Um, but I just want to share that one. Okay. Here's one where I'm using Wikidata and I'm mapping Wikidata written works and mapping them to Dublin Core bibliographic resources. Dublin Core is a full anthology. It has classes defined as well as properties. Most of us are used to using the Dublin Core properties in our metadata application profiles. Here I've used a combination of both their classes and their properties exclusively mapped live from this um, search. And as this one, we're doing written works. So we'll go here. Oops. Run it. And here goes the Dublin Core. Um, you can see the bibliographic resource, the titles using their language tags and their descriptions and subjects. For our subject, you can see I've typed it as a Dublin Core linguistic system. And then it also has its own title, but also this bibliographic resource has a version. So this is how I'm like doing a almost like a one-to-one -one mapping from say like a bib frame work in an instance to connecting two different Dublin Core bibliographic resources. So this work, written work, has a version, and then this version has been typed as um, a bibliographic resource, but you can see this version has a format. It's a printed book, it has an issuance, it has a date issued, and it also has a publisher, which has been typed as an agent. The, um, the instance also has a, uh, Oh, that's the work. So the work also has a creator and it's also been typed as an agent as well. And as you can see, this is what the Dublin core, what the shape would look like in a graph. It's not pretty because I'm not coloring it and labels are not um, are not displayed, but you know, in the engine it's dynamic. So if you click on it, you could get your, your additional data, but you could see how the shape of this graph is forming out in Dublin core. Okay, let's go back. We have another one where I did a similar thing where um, I, I take the results out of Wikidata and converted it to a schema creative works. I've also created like the equivalent of a works and an instant using creative works as the equivalent of a bib framework and uh what did I use? Oh, a book <laughs> as the equivalent of the instant. Um, in this one, I also pulled back other URIs uh, and resolved them to create uh, to create URIs. For this case, for the works, I've used OCLC entity uh, identifiers, and then I resolved those back. For the instance, I use an OCLC control number uh to represent the instance uh and then i did the same thing with oh the names so i pulled i used uh library of congress uh uh identifiers to pull back uh and resolve uris for uh the agent so when we click this one run it and then here we go. So we have our entities. Um, we have our schema names. We have the authors. We have our types. And then we have our various things. We have our book edition that's connected to the work. And then we're using the control number URI. It's not an RDF file, but it, it, it's at least pointing to that instance. Um, so 
for that one. And then again, you can see how the shape, oh, that one didn't allow me. Oh, that one didn't allow me to do a, uh, to do a graph on it. And I believe I have one more, yes. So this one, I call it the Wikidata written work, converting it to a bib framework, including a bib frame instance. This isn't a full bib frame record, but I call it a bib frame fragment that you could start with. Um, as you can see in the graph, there's a lot of blank nodes that corresponds to the blank nodes in your bib frame records. Um, when we look here, let's see. Do, do, do. And again, here's here's what our uh, here's what our works look like with our bib frame. Uh, we have you see we use the bib frame ontology as well as the bib frame uh, LC extensions uh, to represent this data, but this is straight out of Wikidata. Okay, so to see how this workflow really works out, I'm gonna go back and we'll just say, we'll throw in, uh, here, I'll throw in these the first example. So when we go here, I'm gonna get rid of the one example and I want all the triples. So take a second to run it. All right, 18,593 triples, right? So we go here to the download. We're going to save it as a CSV. I'm going to save it here as Wikidata SCOS underscore output 007. Okay, so we save the data. We're then gonna go over to the CSV to Python, uh, to RDF converter. And we're gonna change our output, point our output to um, the, the, the directory where your, uh, your CSV file was saved. And then I'm also gonna uh, point to where I want my output RDF uh, NT file to be saved. So we got that. I run it. And it's ran. And then I go to, oops, let's go. Do, do, do. We go to the triple store. You can see I have an empty one that says scoff demo. There is 78 inferred triples in there. Uh, and that's mainly uh, the, the this graph database is uh, built with default SCOS, RDF and RDFS already pre-mapped in there. So I assume those are just the SCOS, RDF, OWL and RDFS stuff. So we'll go here and import our just created RDF file that came out of the CSV to RDF converter. Scott's demo, output. There it goes, NT file right there. Import, we're gonna, I'm gonna put it in the default graph. If you wanted to put it in a name graph, you totally could. That was successful. You can see we have 18,000 now total triples in here. And then you should be able to uh, 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 query, query your data now in the triple store. So for example, here we go, I'll run it. Oh, occupation, that's why, that's the wrong person. Sure, I'll run that one. There you go. So here goes our exact matches, our close matches. We have person data. 
We have their description, date of birth, and you got data in a triple store straight out of Wikidata. You could turn it to however you want it. <laughs> you can use it however you want. You want to build some stuff on top of it. It's ready to go. So um, pretty much that is the presentation in a nutshell. Again, I shared all those Sparkle queries on the Wiki. And if you guys want to get in touch with me, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out. I'm looking for, I'm always looking for people to collaborate with on potential projects uh, and, you know, try to work as a community to build out some things. So thank you. Thanks so much, Darnell. That was great. It was like watching a magic show. Um, <laughs> um, do people have questions or comments or ideas for collaboration? I, I'm, I hope everything's working with people. Oh, Krista says she's too much in awe to have questions. Yeah, there aren't any. Well, there's one that just came in from uh, from someone, but there. Other than that, there's none that are coming in at Slack or in the question and answer panel. But the one that just came in was, "What kind of tools have you used to validate your output?" Yeah. Um... Well, the output, it just depends. So um, for me, as you can see in my demonstration, I mainly did, it was like an entity extraction. So I didn't pull all the possible triples I could have out of there. For me, the main point was to create a concept so you could then build upon iteratively in your triple store and stuff. So for example, the triples that were in Wikidata with say the data that's in a the LC name authority of file, that's just an authorized access point, which you know it's a disambiguated label, it's typed, and it may have a date of birth, uh, some information, but you know it's going to be different with the different NACO records because you know the the, the note that establishes those entries in an authority are not going to necessarily be all the same, so. Uh, for my point for this, I was just bringing back label, uh, classing it, and then, you know, bringing back a description that could I could then build upon or link it, merge it with, say, uh, other authority data or other other stuff like that. Um, I do look at it. Uh, it will show up. So, for example, uh, a quality case did come up. Uh, when I loaded it uh, a couple months ago when I was first building the workflow out, um, something I, I know that there were triples in the triple store, but I couldn't hit a match and nothing was coming back. And so I looked at it, it was one thing, it was the namespace declaration, you know, uh, the newer stuff in the in wiki data, the entity might have an HTTPS, but then some of the legacy stuff is still without the just HTTP. So I didn't put both. And it took me a week to figure it out. You know, I'm like, what's going on? It was driving me crazy. So sometimes like that, you might see it. Also, if things appear disjointed in your graph, it, that's also so uh, that's also a visual cue to say, hey, something's not right. So I use those kind of techniques uh, because I primarily work with special collections material. Uh, using something like a shape expression wouldn't necessarily work for me because no two things are going to be the same, you know, with the, with like special collection stuff that I'm modeling and building out. Um, we have a couple of other questions and then uh, a couple of compliments. Always a treat to hear Darnell give a presentation. Uh, great talk. I'm just starting to learn more about SCA. So it was nice to see it used in a demo. And then some of them that's really helpful to see the process. Uh, so some of the questions that went along with some of these other comments were, have you tried to load the BF output into any bib frame specific editors? No, I haven't as of yet, but uh, I, you know, I could pretty much, you know, when it comes to transforming data, I could take, I could get data into pretty much any form or get it into anything. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I haven't tried it yet because at this point, you know, the whole case was trying to take 
public data on the fly and be able to incorporate it with say like authority data or 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 some other some other forms of data um and so i haven't i haven't got that far but like i said i'm always willing to work um you guys know i love working with this community and i really love this stuff for me this is not a job i mean i feel like i'm a kid on christmas playing with toys you know <laughs> It really, it really is, you know, I really do enjoy this, you know, so uh, I'm always willing to collaborate work. We could try new things. I'm always down for experimenting uh, with new, you know, best practices, methods and everything. So it's like, I'm about to get on this train. Let's roll. <laughs> Who wants to ride with me? <laughs> Uh, another comment, uh, this one from Crystal, this is such incredible work. How did you drum up support for this project from administrators at your institution? Yeah, so, you know, linked data, we've been doing a lot of linked data work here, even before uh, my time here at UNLV, uh, my predecessor, uh, they were, and, my, and the department head, Corey Lamper, have been doing tremendous work in linked data you know, it started for me when I got hired was during a pre-migration. We were migrating out of Content DM into, um, well, we decided to go into an Island Dora instance. And so my first couple of years, you know, I was already wrangling URIs and stuff. So for me, how I got into linked data, you know, people consider me a linked data expert, but how it started for me was remediating large legacy data linked data was the answer to that problem and stuff and so what i was doing early on in my library career was um creating these huge crosswalk tables of basically uh non-preferred labels you know alternative labels because they were hand People were typing this stuff in spreadsheets and stuff like that. You know, if they added an extra character, or extra space to a computer, that's a different concept. So I had to reconcile all that. We had to dedupe records and stuff like that. And I had to come up with um, large scale, large scale techniques to deal with, to deal with that kind of stuff. And when I, once I realized that, well, hey, if I just reference something by URI instead of its label, then I could catch, you know, we could start catching those label variants and stuff and then consult saying, nope, rewrite it. This is the preferred label, not that one with the extra space at the end, which you don't even know until, you know, you start doing character counts because to the naked eye, you know, John Smith and then John Smith space bar to the eye, it looks the same. <laughs> so... I wonder how many of us actually get into like data in the same exact way. I know that's been a little bit of my experience as well. Uh, another person asked, is there still a free version of GraphDB or do you have to have a subscription? Yeah, the version that you just saw me use, that one was free version. Uh, there's still um, the limitation, I believe, is the plugins and stuff. Like I can't plug in Elasticsearch into this triple store. I think I could do Lucian and maybe a solar index, but that's pretty much what's limiting on um, from the enterprise and the free version. And for my case, you know, I'm just, I'm playing with data to look at and analyze the structure, you know, and like for me, this triple, I loaded this triple store is because I wanted to look at bib frame. You know, people talk about bib frame, but how many people are actually querying a graph of bib frame records? Not too many people are doing it. We might be able to look it up and say like the shared VDE um, portal, but no one's, I don't know too many people who are querying raw wiki frame hubs, works, instances, you know, or items, you know, so um, yeah. There's a question from the Q&A tab, and it's, do you have favorite crosswalks that you have utilized or maybe some of your own that you have created to aid your workflows that you could share? Yeah, uh, 
technically I don't own them because they were my previous, I worked for my previous employer, but one I could talk about in the early days of archive space when I was still at Ohio State, um, they were an early adopter of archive space and archive space was so bad at the time that Ohio State decided to go back into archivist toolkit. And so I, I had to write, I had to write uh, XSLT transformations uh, to convert that data to go into archivist toolkit. I've also wrote transformations to go out of, oh God, what was it? A past perfect, which was a museum management software to go into archive space. I mean, we've, I've, I've done them. I've worked with all of it. You know, I started my library career as a Mark cataloger and stuff, but quickly on, you know, I was being asked to not do cataloging, which I'm a pretty good cataloger, but uh, I've been asked to work more on transforming legacy data and integrating it into, into new types of systems and stuff. And honestly, that really opened up a broader skill set. It was like, I almost had to learn how to become a developer and a cataloger <laughs> to, you know, to, to be able to do and pull off some of these kinds of things that I've been asked to do. Will you be sharing your slides? That's my own. Yeah, the slides are um, are in the scheduler, so you could uh, you could get them there. But also, just for future reference, all my presentation slides and links to videos are in Open Science Framework, so you can look for me there. You'll be able to find you'll be able to find all all my previous stuff there. Also. You might want to look me, you can look me up in Wikidata. I don't think everything's there, but um, that, uh, you know, the if you infer, there's a there's an infer engine on the bottom of Wikidata. Uh, if you look at a Wikidata item, I don't know if it's a plugin or not, but if you run it, you'll see like works and stuff that I, that I'm associated with. And then also there was a third one too. Uh, oh, there's always, you could always... If you want to look me up in Orchid, you know, you you know, I always put my stuff is pretty much updated there. So I try to keep, you know, all my, you know, intellectual works and stuff like that all, you know, updated and connected because, you know, we're living in that linked data world. Let's connect it, you know. There's a little more time. So if you have more questions, please add them. Oh, I got some I could show you guys. You know, it's kind of funny. I was so excited. This is this what happened. So I was so excited preparing for this presentation and I was marking up the examples. Here, let me go back into screen share mode real quick. Uh, I was go going over the examples. I added a whole new section to this wiki unrelated to this stuff. I was like, so I worked out some new sparkle uh, on lookups, sec concept seven. So I don't know if you've ever work with this, but uh, the media wiki API, you can actually call API calls inside of Sparkle. And so for this one was a pretty cool one. You could look up for common photos by the wiki, uh, Wikimedia user, which is kind of cool. Uh, so when I run this one, you get see it's, I use my, my uh, username is bringing back probably the headshots that are associated to my Wikidata item and stuff like that. That was a cool lookup. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to work with some with more of some lookup stuff. And then I did this one was a label search uh, by a class. So basically, you could put fill in the p31 value, and then you could use a label search, use a label to get an item. You can see here I used um, it's a written work. And I'm looking for the autobiography of Malcolm X. So when I run this one, this is probably, this is, this stuff is really powerful. You can see, and I've only asked for the item and its label and stuff, but you can see, you know, I could start adding, asking for other stuff as well and stuff. So this is the new one that I'm, I've been working on. Um, actually, I just wrote these like 30 minutes ago, but uh, this, this was a fun little thing that I, I've, I've been I've been playing with and stuff. So yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Darnell. That was so much fun. 
Uh, and uh, and just your enthusiasm is so contagious. I love it. I don't know what it is. I don't, <laughs> it, it's something that just clicked. I don't know the the nature of the triples. Whether it was you know Chin's original uh, entity uh, entity uh, entity management uh, uh, frame. I don't even know what it what it is. But it's just something about this. It excites me. The thing that really, uh, for me, is this. I'm trying to empower more people to use it, not just the big dogs, the LCs, the OCLCs. Like this data needs. To, it's about us. I mean, it needs to be in the people's hands. So I'm trying to empower people to try to use this graph technology and stuff to tell their own stories, to empower themselves and their own communities and stuff. And that's where the real power of it, and this goes back to the true semantic web vision. You know, it wasn't about corporations running a semantic web. It was about us empowering ourselves so the machines will be working for us in innovative and better ways. You know, let's go back to that. I can't think of a better statement for this particular conference. Thank you. Yeah. And this was just brilliant. And thanks so much to you and to Bree for um, servicing every question and comment and being a great comod and um, and to all the conference hosts for helping me be a, a first time host. Susan, thank you. And, and thank you all for hanging out with me and stuff, you know, if you weren't here, I'll still probably be in my in this office right here you know, writing on my, my whiteboards and talking to myself or <laughs> right. you know. talking to your whiteboard. Um, I like what Bonnie wrote. She said, uh, this was great. Thanks so much. This has me excited to dig into this again. Not my job, but I love it. Great. Great. That's what we need. We want more. We need more of us doing this stuff. So yeah. thanks Darnell. We need to bottle you so I can just drink some every morning and get inspired <laughs> thank you hey wait there's some something else coming down um and just adding yeah. links Darnell's thank you links that jessica found so that uh, oh. everybody can have them here in chat yay right. oh yeah and then there goes the last i saw a last link somebody put uh my pcc pilot page. so that has other sparkle too if you guys and more specific to the wiki data pro projects that we've been doing um, here at UNLV. And also, you should come back Thursday because our Wikimedia and in resident will be giving a presentation on the LGBTQ plus community work we've been doing also. So uh, I'm really excited. But hey, thank you guys. And, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than welcome to consult and have any conversation. Let's build. Let's build, guys. Thanks so much, Darnell. Thank you Thank for you, everyone. All right. Okay.